Hey everybody, Brian Tro from Mossy Creek coming to you with an episode of Fly Fishing Untangled. I'm in the mountains of Virginia and I wanted to share with you uh, some tips and tactics on mountain brook trout fishing, specifically how to approach a pool. Constantly when I'm guiding, people are always asking me how close can I get, how far from I get. Uh, at the end of the day, that's a, a situational thing. It's case by case. As a guide, that's one of the most important things that we do is we figure out the best place to stand and how close you can get before you spook them. Ultimately, I learned this by scaring a lot of fish, okay? If you stay too far back from these mountain streams, um, you're gonna have bad presentations, you're gonna be caught in the trees, uh, you're gonna be getting horrible drag, okay? Brook trout are not very picky about flies. I know we like to think that they are, but on a really good spring day here in Virginia, you can look into your dry fly box and you can catch a brook trout on just about any one of those dry flies. Natural fly, a tractor fly, it doesn't matter. They're opportunistic. So what we want to focus on when we're trying to catch these little guys is presentation and drift, okay? And those are determined by where you stand. As a right-handed person, I tend to make my way up the creek on the left side if I can. That gives me this big open canopy right here in the middle of, these, of the forest that the stream's flowing through. It allows me to cast over top, or in the tunnel as we like to say. This is like a tunnel right down the middle of the woods, okay? So I try my best that the lay of the land allows me to stay on the left side of the stream. Anytime you have natural ob uh, objects like trees or rocks that are down, you can use those for cover. You can use those to hide behind. Those are gonna allow you to get a lot closer to the stream than you otherwise would. Also, light and flow are the two big things that determine how close you can get. All right, if you look up here, there's pretty good volume of water coming down the stream. This pool has got a lot of current. It's got wave trains, it's got bubbles, it's loud, all right? So the fish are in there, they're hearing all that churning of water and it's throwing and refracting light all over the place. That conceals my approach. I can get closer because they can't see me or hear me as well. And also, I need to get closer because with all that current, I'm gonna have crazy drag, okay? Sometimes you can be really great at reading water, but until you make that first cast on the pool and see what your fly line's doing, sometimes it's difficult to read, all right? Now, in just a moment, I'm gonna kinda of break this water down and show you how I approach the, the pool. But it's important to remember this. It's very easy to get enticed by the best looking spot on the water, okay? You've got to be disciplined, go slow, all right? And do what I like to call fishing your way into the hole, okay? You might wanna start in some water that's not a prime lie, just to do your due diligence, make sure you're not spooking anything, make sure you're not pushing any fish up into the water you're about to fish. So start in front of you and then start to work a little bit further out each and every time. All right, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna move slowly, moving up this left side. I have good shade over here too, which really helps me a lot. And I'm gonna get low, lower profile. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fish what's called the lip of the pool. This is difficult sometimes because you have this fast current right here as the water lips out. So I'm having to get a little bit close so that I can hold a high stick and hold my rod up. But a lot of times right there, right as the water flows out, a fish will be there. And that's the one that you almost practically step on when you charge up to fish the head of the pool, okay? So a few casts, I've got a little dry dropper on. I'm trying my best to not get too much drag. I fish the lip. Now this rock beside it, these rocks have what we call a push or a cushion on them and the fish will sit on the upstream side of those rocks. So I'm just gonna kinda get a drift or two right down in front of the rock, reading the water. And once I have done my work to make sure there's nobody in right there, I'm gonna move up a little bit and start fishing the pool proper. I'm gonna work up the seam, work up the left side. Oh, I gotta be faster. There's a fish right there. Notice I'm not taking shots all the way up at the head of the pool. I don't want to line anybody.
Come down the wave train. After I've kind of worked the water a little bit, the next thing I do is I'm gonna slowly stand up. I can see better, I can mend better, okay? And the idea is hopefully I've worked this water in front of me enough to know that there's nobody in there right now. There's one fish on right before that push. Beautiful brook trout. Okay, rewarded me. Rewarded me for a nice, quiet approach. Look at that. Look at the red on that little fella. Always fish your barbless hooks. Let them go in calm water so we can't get hurt. On to the next spot. All right, so just to review for the approach, stay low, move to the side of the stream that suits you best for your cast, whether you're a righty or a lefty, if you can. Um, work your way in slowly, fish your way into the pool slowly, starting at the bottom of the pool, the lip, and then move into the middle of the pool and then finally finishing off on the head. You know, a lot of folks say that you need to not wear bright stuff like I've got on right here. And there's some truth to that, perhaps in some low water, but I'm always of the opinion that if the brook trout can tell you what color shirt you're wearing, they can see your shirt. You probably are a little busted. You're probably a little bit too on top of them. So if you keep those low angles and stuff, stuff doesn't matter quite as much what you've got. Just be stealthy, you know, these waders that have knee pads in them really really helps your approach you can spend spend an afternoon with your knees on the rocks and not get beat up too much and at the end of the day the worst case scenario is you moved up too quick or stood up too fast it happens to the best of us it happens all all the time i've been fishing in these little creeks for over 30 years and i scare fish all the time it just lets you know that under those conditions you're, you're getting too close too quickly um, you ruin the pool here you scare everything in it the forgiving and wonderful thing about brook trout is you go up that little waterfall and you walk 20 feet, 30 feet, and you're on a brand new pool. Everything is reset. Those fish have no idea you're there. And you start your approach over again. So take it all case by case. The lay of the land changes. Each pool is a little bit different. But just use these simple approaches or tips on your approach so that you aren't spooking as many fish up in the mountains.